Hey everybody, welcome to Post to Post. My name's Neil, joined here with my dad, Brent, aka The Goat. How you doing, dad? Not bad. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. This was a, a pretty good week. Now, we're both Montreal Canadiens fans, so uh, I figured, well, there's no one better to talk to other than yourself, uh, because not only were you a part of the channel, but we frequently talk about the Montreal Canadiens since they're our favorite we team. Yes, we uh, there was some big news this week, and uh, Claude Julien was fired as well as Kirk Muller. And Dominic Ducharme has taken over was with the help of Alex Burroughs. So that, yeah. that's the headline. Let's dig into this. Uh, okay. First, how much Montreal Canadiens hockey have you watched so far this season? Uh, a great deal. I've, I've watched almost every game. Uh, the only and, and in, in its entirety, uh, skimming through commercials sometimes if I had it on PVR. But I've been watching basically every game until the last couple. Uh, I did watch the first post-coaching change Winnipeg game, and I did watch the game, the Saturday night game in Winnipeg. But for the one or two games leading up to the firing, I didn't watch because I had made my mind up that if uh, the players didn't want to play, then why should I want to watch them? Yeah, that's that's true. It's been a very frustrating 14 to 25 days or whatever it's been for the Montreal oh, Canadiens. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit of a nightmare, to be completely honest, and... Uh... I, I don't even expect them to play at the level that they did in the first 10 games or whatever it was. I just want them to be consistent. I don't want them to be a great team. I just want them to be an average good team, but just be consistent. Like, that's really all I want. I can't take this wishy-washy stuff. Players showing up some nights. Some nights they don't. Carey Price looks awesome one night. The next night he looks like the worst goalie in the, in the NHL. We're paying him $10 million plus. It's just very frustrating. I, I hate inconsistent players and goaltenders. I would rather be an average team that played consistent, that didn't make the playoffs, versus a team that played really well all season, uh, but was like inconsistent in certain times, they made the playoffs, and then, you know, just blew up. I, I, yeah. I hate inconsistency. It drives me crazy. I, I guess I don't like it, and I you could say I hate it too, but I guess I under... My, my biggest problem with inconsistency is I don't understand it. I don't know how it happens. Yeah. Like, how can how can person A be great one night and not great the next night? Like, what did it something he ate? Did he is it something he pooped? Was it something <laughs> like what what happened between Tuesday night and Thursday night? Yeah. What happened? It's true. I, that, it's all about sports psychology. I don't pretend to understand it. I certainly don't. But I'm a very I. I I'm like you, or I guess you're like me. I like dependability. I like reliability. I like to be a reliable person. I like that if I'm at work and someone messages me about a work item, that they know I'm going to see it right away and they know I'm going to respond to it right away. Like I, I, I like being dependable. I think that's a quality. I think it's an asset for everybody and no matter what they do. But especially so if you're an athlete. And I know that not all athletes can be exactly, you know, up to 100% every day, but these people are millionaires. Yeah. They're grief, you know, like yeah. at least try. And and whoever's standing behind the bench with a suit and a mask on should have a lot less influence on how good or bad a player is on one night to the next. Yes, absolutely. It should be on the players to to take control in a, in a way. And the, the coach is there to guide them, not control them. So, yeah, it and. Now, what I understand from watching, like I watch uh, the Habs Inside Out uh, YouTube channel, and they do a a vlog, a, a podcast type vlog, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, basically every Thursday, and it comes out of Montreal, and it's got Stu Cowan, Rick Green, uh, and it's got uh, Jessica Rusnak are the three journalists who right. who talk about the team every week, and there's a new host this year who I like a lot better than than the well, previous. There's host, a new right? host this year. Yes, oh. like, you can start. You can start watching it again. I might actually that, watch it now. Yeah, because that Adam Susser is gone. Uh, I I couldn't. I just couldn't stand his approach to life. I I, <laughs> I really didn't like his voice. I really didn't like his voice. Like some people, just don't have a voice that comes across well in a microphone. They just yeah. don't, and it's not their fault. They it's were born not. that way. Yeah. They 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 squirted out of the womb with a voice <laughs> that's not good for a microphone. But good grief, uh, Adam was terrible. Like, I couldn't even understand it. It's like, whenever he talked, I just heard glass breaking or something. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Anyway, but now I can watch the, I can watch it again. He's a really good, really good host. He doesn't get involved. He's not trying to be a comedian. He just, you know, gets the traffic flowing between the other three, and it's really good. Mm. But a couple of them made a point this last week, just after the firing. And the point they were making, a long way to get to that, but the point they were making was that when they, 
it looks like the writing was probably on the wall for Claude Julien for a couple of weeks at least. And what they should have done was do it prior to the long break they had, the week-long break, rather than wait through the break. Yeah. And then do it almost immediately after the break ended because you had a, a rough game. Now, the other question that came up in that is if the NHL had actually applied itself to the rules properly and let that goal count in Ottawa with two seconds left to go mm -hmm. in that third period game where Montreal would have won the game, would that have saved Claude Julien's bacon? And the general feeling around the, 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 the discussion table was no, it wouldn't have. That one win is not what would have saved him and the one loss is not what did him in. Apparently, according to Stu, uh, he'd lost the room. Yes. Uh, and and that's that's fatal. It's really hard to come back from that. And and I admit, as much as I was trying to be funny a while ago and I said the guy behind the bench shouldn't really matter, uh, when it's just behind the bench and you're doing strategy and you should stand over there for the face-off and that kind of thing, that shouldn't matter. But when you've lost the dressing room and the players don't want to play for you, then it does matter, and it matters a lot. Yeah, and I think... I can't remember the journalist that came out and said it on Twitter, but he had interviewed whoever from the Montreal Canadiens, and the Canadians actually said that that this that the decision was made prior to that Ottawa game even taking place. So regardless of what happened in that Ottawa game, the announcement was still going to be made the, made the next morning. Now, Shea Weber came out and publicly said that uh, there was some I don't know I don't know the exact quote, but I think he said negative energy or negative negativity or something in the dressing room. So there's obviously something going on, regardless if it was with uh, Claude Julian or not, there's negative stuff happening in the dressing room. There probably still is. I don't know if it's player related or personality related or line combination related. We'll probably never know, but still there's obviously something going on. Hopefully yeah. Dominic Ducharme can be the answer and Alex Burroughs. They played well last night, although they didn't win. Uh, I... I think it's I th I like their decision just to get back to the original question in the in the topic. I like their decision to get rid of Claude Julian. I think it was time. Uh I know the success that Dominic Ducharme has in international hockey and junior hockey. He's a coach that goes places and he wins. So hopefully they that transitions to the NHL level here in Montreal uh for the rest of the year because they're not going to make any changes from what I'm understanding. They're going to wait until the end of the year reevaluate so i i really like that decision give him a chance L let you know let's see what he can do yeah. yeah and i have a quick question for you all right do you remember where you were when claude julien was hired by the montreal canadians and, Mich ah, and, Mich oh boy. and michelle terrier was fired so this is the first hiring of julien the first yes the first hiring yeah i don't know but i bet you do i was with you Okay. Is that, is that an, a hint at all? Were we at a game? Uh, no, we were not. Because I know, no, that obviously is too long ago. Um, uh, when we used to go to games a lot, I you'll have to help me. I don't know where were we. Uh, yeah, you were close in a way. Technically, we weren't at a game, but we were in Toronto, about to go to a game. Okay. We were in the food court in some place in in Toronto before the game. Yes, we were. We were just across uh, Union Street in the food court underneath. We were, yeah, we had gotten different food, but we were waiting to go to, I think that was the night we just went to buy our tickets. Yes, it was, yeah. And then we went to the game like the next night. But yeah, yeah I, I remember that being in the food court vividly. Now, now the minute you say <laughs> it, I remember us reacting like going, oh my God. Yeah, you had gone to the yeah. bathroom, I think, and came back, and I had got the news on my phone. As soon as he walked back, I told you, and you're like, what? So What? Uh, and then I probably had to go to the bathroom again. I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but anyways, just uh, it's 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 an odd situation because Michelle Therrien has had two stints in Montreal. Claude Julien has had two stints in Montreal. Who's going to replace Dominic Ducharme hypothetically if he doesn't work out this year? Is it going to be Alain Vigneault? <laughs> because that oh, would make his second term in Montreal. But yeah, well, you know, you got to say the Canadians would be environmentally friendly. They believe in recycling. Yeah, exactly. Um, you and I had a quick discussion just on chat on the night that this all or the morning that this all happened. And I think we both are in agreement. I don't want to steal your thunder, but but I think there's a coach that's out there that has a former affiliation with the team as an assistant coach who also has been very successful. Yes. 
and and who has gone to the Stanley Cup Finals in his first year with a brand new team, and now we're starting to figure out who it is. And you mentioned it first, and I totally agree with you. There is a limitation, though, being in Montreal because this particular coach, despite his last name, uh, does not speak French, and that's a big that's a big thing in Montreal. And I get that. Are you one hundred percent on that? That he doesn't speak French. I I'm very close on that. He might know the odd phrase, but he does not. He's not a He's not a native French speaker. It's not his mother tongue. I I I didn't know. I don't know either way. So yeah. uh, it's I'm, I'm it's quite sure it's not. It's very unfortunate. I understand the language, right? Like the French media and stuff. Like it is an, is a t- requirement for them. I I understand, but I want to win. I don't care if the coach speaks Swahili or if that's even a language. I don't care. It is a language, and uh, <laughs> and I agree with you. I, and I actually think the fans, the majority of the fans of the Montreal Canadiens that are on the French side of the equation, and that would be the majority of fans, period, I guess, in Montreal and the market. Uh, if they had a winning coach that didn't speak French, they would accept that. I, I think they I would hope. Because they have in the past. You've got Toe Blake. You've got Al McNeil. You've got Scotty Bowman. These are coaches yes, that coached yes. before your time. But they're legendary coaches, and they've coached Montreal to amazing runs of victories in the Stanley Cups. And you never heard the question being asked back then. Having said that, society was a little different back then too, and I have to acknowledge that. Yes. Society in Quebec is a lot more, um, uh, a lot more nationalistic, I guess, or a lot more, uh, uh, I guess, proud of itself, if you want to say it that way. So I, I do think it's important. But man, I'd love to see Gerard Gallant back behind the bench of the Montreal Canadiens because he's a great coach, and yeah. he's from he's from PEI, which is awesome yeah. too. But uh, I think he would really resonate well and this is why i think so when he went to vegas like this is a team that was built out of the expansion draft and they brought in players one from every team sometimes two from a couple of teams and they started with a bunch of guys some of them probably knew each other but they had never played together before or hardly ever and in a large extent montreal is like that right now with all the free agency they've done and some of the trades they've done they've got a room that's almost an expansion type chemistry except for that core group of people yeah Gallagher's and, and Deneau's and Price. Uh, but for the most part, like a lot of the other players are new. You put a Gallant in there, he's already got a proven track record of being able to weld a team together in a dressing room and have them go out there and do amazing things. So I, I'm quite happy to give Dominic Ducharme a chance. I think he probably is what they thought he was, which is a coach in waiting. And here he is now, and he has a chance. And I don't want to be too hard on him too early. They've got two losses in Winnipeg. Uh, but the second one, I thought, I agree with you. They played well. They just didn't win the game. And they got a point out of it. Jake Allen was good. Uh, I think I think the biggest problem is now, I think the coaching thing is not a big problem anymore. Carey Price is a big problem. I agree. Yeah. I, I Every time they start Carey Price, after Jake Allen has played absolutely incredible, some of the best hockey he's ever played in his life, maybe the best hockey he's ever played in his life, but then they start Carey Price because he's the golden boy. boy. I understand it. And you want to justify it because you're paying him so much money. I, you know, you don't want to pay someone that uh, that amount of money to sit in, on a bench. I get it. But why not play the best person at, at any given night? Like, I understand that he's the primary goalie, and you should play him more often than not. But it shouldn't matter when you want to win. If you want to win, play the right man. And right now... The right man is is Jake Allen. Carey Price is going through whatever he's going through. I don't I don't I don't know what it is, and I don't care because I'm just I'm tired of it. Every single year, there's a month where Carey Price is absolute garbage, and then the next month he's fine. So just let Jake Allen play for a month, let him do his thing. Once he starts to falter a little bit, put Carey Price back in and let him fight for the net back. That's if that's yeah. how it has to be, then that's how it has to be. I don't care. I just want to win. Like I and don't. I think, and I think when you've got two basically two starting goaltenders. Uh, I think that's how you have to do it. I think you have to let the goaltenders sort it out. And and I think Kerry's a big enough boy. He'd understand that. I hope so. Uh, yeah, certainly uh, Jake Allen, uh, he, he's still making quite a bit of money, even though he's not making Kerry Price money. He's not making $10.5 million a year, but he's making millions. And uh, to leave him on the bench when you know he's the best goalie right now is just it's, it's idiocy. It's crazy. So get him out there. There's going to be a lot of back-to-back games. In the next month or so, Montreal has like 16 or 17 games. So there's going to be some back-to-backs. Both goalies will get their turn, no matter who is playing better at any one given time. So yeah, I'm like you. Start Jake. 
keep make Jake your main guy, at least for, you know, the next two weeks and let Kerry work with Stefan Waite. Apparently he's getting uh, some, you know, mentoring or goalie coaching from Stefan Waite. But then I, when they said that in the broadcast last night, I'm kind of wondering, like, does a 33 or 34 year old goaltender who's been playing in the league almost 15 years, does he need coaching? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. Eh? And, and, and if he does, if he does need coaching, and I don't know anything about being a goalie, uh, if he does need coaching, what kind of coaching is going on? And is it, is it sports psychology more so than technique? I think, Gary Price. yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's gotta be psych psychological and not, uh, talent wise. He's the best positional goaltender in the NHL. Uh, he, awesome. he makes everything look flawless. It's, it has to be in his head. It's gotta be emotional. And yeah. I've read many articles where Carey Price is considered like, He's incredibly competitive. Like it, it, it destroys him when he loses, and he he's turned down interviews and signings and stuff because he's so emotionally distraught because of a losing streak or because he's not he's not playing well. Like it eats him alive, which is great. I mean, what it's not it's not great for him, but I mean, it's it's great that he's emotionally invested uh, after every single loss. It's just I don't know. It's maybe there's just too much going on in his head. And I, I don't know. I, I, I'm a nobody. You're a nobody. We don't know the right answer. I just want the right answer to happen as a fan. And I think generally speaking, and this may be Kerry's attitude. I know it seems to be the whole team's attitude that when they're playing uh, an elite team, they get up for that elite team. Yes. If Montreal's playing Toronto. They're going to bring their best game. They might not win that game, but they're going to come and they're going to skate their, their, their butts off. Uh, to try to beat Toronto. Mm. But if they're playing Ottawa, they don't. And this has happened for years. Years. When Montreal has played a substandard team, if they're playing Arizona or if they're playing Ottawa or if they're playing whatever, Florida, you know, a couple of years back. When Montreal would play a team like that, just when you think you've got a, a win in the book and you don't have to work too hard, they end up losing the game. It's unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> it is crazy. And, and I think, like, the, the only good news about that is if Montreal can get into the playoffs, and right now that's no sure bet. It was a sure bet two weeks ago. It's not now. If Montreal gets into the playoffs, I actually have pretty good confidence that both Carey Price and Jake Allen will be 100% effective as goalies. They may not win every game, but they'll be very good. They won't be the reason Montreal doesn't win. Yes, I actually agree uh, with that as well. Because in a playoff, you can you get up for that game no matter who you're playing. Yeah. But that's what Montreal needs. They need uh, an opponent that's worth fighting against. And they don't consider... Ottawa to be that opponent or even Winnipeg and here we are yep so like that's that, that's psychological that's got nothing to do with you know how many calories you have to burn tonight and and all that it's 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 in the head and Nick Suzuki said that in one of his interviews you know we're up in our own heads right now like they're they're trying to figure out what it is they have to, what channel they have to change hmm. to be a different team and part of that is probably the coach and but part, a lot of that is the players themselves. They're the ones who are being paid the money. Yeah. The, the idea of a sports contract is I give you millions of dollars. You play as hard as you can. Yeah, that's as, honestly as simple as that, pretty much. And they're not. I, so. I'm i usually quite hard on my own team, the Canadians, as as you are as well. But I, I, have, I, I still have a good feeling about the team. I think they're going to bounce back. Maybe not right away. Maybe not in the next two weeks. But I, I feel like they will claw back into the season and make the playoffs. I, I do feel good about the team. I do, too. I, I think they might end up in fourth. Maybe they might make it up to third. That'll be as high as they get, probably. Yeah. Uh, they were contending for first or second. I don't think they are now. But, of course, if they end up fourth, they're probably taking on Toronto in the first round. And if they are, then I think Montreal gets up for those games. Yep. I'm, I not, be, wouldn't be too sure they'd win them or win the series, but... But it would be a good series. And I think they will claw their way up. If they're looking up at three or four teams above them, they will push. But if they think they've got it made, that's when they take their foot off the pedal. They've yeah. had a little too much luxury in doing that lately. Yeah. Montreal plays better as an underdog than a, a top-tier team. Well, we saw that with Pittsburgh in the uh, in the bubble, didn't we? Yeah. You know, I, I, I have a good feeling, like you. I, I'm not overly pessimistic. I think Montreal can get into the playoffs, mainly because uh, there are teams below them that just won't be good enough. Uh, so it's not, any, it's not any credit to Montreal. <laughs> yes. It's just a weak, yeah. it's a weak division at the bottom end. But having said that, 
I do have confidence. Hopefully, uh, Josh Anderson's injury is only short term Mm. because he's a big part of this. I I thought Romanov played really well last night. I thought he made some good decisions and he had lots of energy. And that's what you seem to find even when the team struggles. And they've struggled at times over the years, the several years we've been watching them with a lot of these current guys in the lineup. There's always a few of those guys that still play well, even when the whole team isn't. And I see Roman Romanov. Sorry, I want to say it the right way. That's what he prefers. Yeah. Romanov. Um, I see him in that vein. I don't think he's affected by that stuff. Um, I don't think Brendan Gallagher is overly affected by that stuff. I thought he played a very energetic game last night. Uh, but there are a few who, you know, are just a little too slack. I didn't think Petrie had a good game. Uh, that penalty he took was bad, bad timing. But, uh, you know. The, the penalties uh, is just, it, it's very oh, frustrating. That, that, the first game with the new coach, like the, the, the more blowout game against Winnipeg where they lost badly. It was just a march to the penalty box. And that yeah. was the one thing that, you know, they were talking about that Ducharme had to get back into the minds of these players. It's you can't keep going into the penalty box. We can't be playing the whole game with special teams. Yeah, most penalized team in the NHL. And uh, it's, it's not like they're dirty. It, like it's, it's just it's stupid. stupid. It's, it's stupid plays. Glass and it's, yeah. You know, the, the little tiny hooks on someone's wrist and stuff like that. And, ah, oh, it just drives me crazy. Yeah, it's dumb. It's, it, oh, just, uh, I'm getting angry just thinking about it. So let's, <laughs> let's close it off here. Uh, we both All have right. high hopes for Montreal. We both like the decision of Claude Julien being fired and Kirk Muller. Uh, I like Kirk Muller. I like them both as, a, as people, Kirk Muller and Claude Julien, just for the record. Uh, but I'm glad me to too. see I, a change. I like them both. And I was really glad to see that Claude had another year left on his contract. So he's going to make some money. He's going to yep. be able to sit home and continue to recover from his bad health scare he had last year. Yep. And he's going to be able to make five million bucks just from, for sitting there. Maybe someone else will hire him. But even if they don't, if he's smart with the money that he's got, he's probably set for life. Which oh, yeah. is awesome. Kirk yep. Muller, I really, I, I think I was more disappointed with the Kirk Muller piece than I was with the Julian piece. I agree. Uh, I, I don't know how effective Kirk Muller was in the back you know, in the back door where the defense is. Um, I, I really like him as a guy though. And, and the thing I like the most about having Kirk Muller behind the bench is he was really our last connection with the 1993 Stanley Cup. Yeah, it was it. Eh? And now that he's gone, that connection is really broken. Certainly it's been broken in the terms of players long ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrice Brisebois was the last player on the Canadians that had been part of that 93 team. Uh, and now Kirk Muller's gone as a coach. And I, I regret that. I get it, but it's too bad. Maybe that's a good thing, though, that maybe that was a bit of a curse. Well, maybe it was. You know, maybe they needed to turn the page there, too. But we'll see. Yeah. All right, uh, Dad, thanks for thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. Please let us know down below in the comment section how you feel about the firing and, a, and the transition of Dominic Ducharme and Alex Burroughs as well. So that's going to be an interesting story to follow. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Hit the subscribe button down below. We'll catch you next time. Adios. Wow. <laughs>